What's up, everybody? I'm Danilo Evangelista for the off-season, the Hurricane Hub discussion for uh, Saturday, December 3rd, 2022, the first uh, off-season, the Hurricane Hub discussion, as I promised you. So without further ado, let's get right to it, shall we? Starting off with the NHC, if we look on here, the page completely empty as, once again, it is no longer hurricane season and there isn't nothing to track um, for now. <clears throat> let's take a look at the satellite loop of the Atlantic. And you can see the same thing, nothing going on. Strong upper level winds cutting across in the atmosphere as you can note by these very strong uh, eastward moving out of the west. Winds in the upper levels, that is very indicative of strong upper level winds and hurricanes cannot develop uh, when there are those type of winds. We sure do have some of these upper level lows too in the Atlantic and sometimes, you know, given the best conditions at any time of year, they can develop, but it doesn't look like um, any of them will um, for now in the next few days or in the next coming weeks. It doesn't look like we'll have the threat for any of those to develop or do anything as of right now. Taking a look at the sea surface temperatures um, throughout December 2nd, this was updated yesterday, this updates every single day from the NOAA Coral Reef Watch, this is the SST anomalies, and what do we see? Well, we basically see uh, basically the Atlantic, very warm as usual, especially in the mid-latitudes, the Gulf of Mexico. Also very warm, very interesting, and we'll have to see how this persists, because maybe if this persists through the winter, um, energy from the mid-latitudes could take something from the Gulf, and we could have some very powerful systems. Depends on how things fray out, though. We'll have to see. And, of course, the blue here in the Pacific along the equatorial Pacific are La Nina, of course, that is hanging on still and is still... Um, persistent out there, although a little bit of weakening occurring. We still have a um, pretty noticeable on any of some of these dark blues and even some off the chart uh, readings here or close to off the charts of some purples there. So that's indicative of some areas that are experiencing very strong anomalies while closer to around here is a little bit less, but still uh, very indicative of a La Nina because we have all these persistent blues throughout the equatorial Pacific. And here's the interesting thing to look at. We have the uh, anomalies of the equatorial Pacific, and what do you and what we're looking at is basically this. But let's let's say we take a cross section of the equatorial Pacific where the La Nina tends to stay around. Uh, let's take that and let's take it as a cross section, so we see how the anomalies are below the surface, because this is on the surface. This is the anomalies below the surface, and this is also important when it comes to looking at the La Nina strength and what we got for the La Nina background as a whole. And what you do notice is see how we have a bunch of these reds and some of these dark browns in here. That is indicative of very warm anomalies building um, under the equatorial Pacific. And you notice that they're starting to spread westward and we got somebody else talking about that here. Um, Dylan um, Jariwala, I'm not gonna pronounce, I'm pretty sure I didn't pronounce that um, name correctly. And I saw this from Twitter. He mentioned that over the past few months, the subsurface warmth in the Pacific has recharged with positive anomalies, as noted here, by a bunch of these not anomalies building from the west and going east. And this has been, by the way, building for, for years now. Basically, since this La Nina started, we had this huge anomalous pool in response to the La Nina build under the Pacific. And in turn, um, it's just basically been waiting for when this La Nina comes out to reach uh, the surface, just as how the La Nina would um, build under the surface if the surface is not as cold and then move upward. That is what um, is important for the La Nina, especially in strength. Um, and he says that they've recharged with positive anomalies extending beyond the international date line. And the atmosphere does remain coupled with the negative ENSO, though, which is why we still have uh, the La Nina in place. Because it's not only what's important that we have at the surface, but it's also important that it correlates with the atmosphere. So we get the actual effect of what's going on at the surface with strong trades that's um, associated with the atmospheric setup of a La Nina. Um, but he's saying that because of this huge warm pool, as he's mentioning at, on his map here, if it's going to load up, but you can see it right there. Oh, here it is. 
you can see right there that it's basically showing the same thing as it is um, from the map that we pulled up here that uh, this is only in delaying the inevitable weakening because look at all these uh, warm anomalies here that are just waiting underneath the surface so at any chance that the La Nina does slacken off these warm anomalies will try to make it to the surface and upwell to the surface and therefore warm the La Nina as a whole so that's why he's saying that this is only delaying inevitable weakening of the La Nina and he's not the only one saying that even the models as the CS as the CFS the CFS um, V2 um, from the NOAA, this is the NOAA's model of the ENSO, and and take a look at what they're showing. Basically the same thing. You see the anomalies kind of staying around where they are right now, which is roughly at moderate to weakish, closer to the moderate range of the La Nina, and they've been persistent for the past few months, as we saw with this La Nina persisting all throughout the hurricane season. But notice, by the time we get to next month in January, notice how they start um, the anomalies increasing significantly. Um, and by roughly, I would say, since this is broken up into around three or four months, this is maybe February uh, right in here, uh, that we got um, warming to right around the 0 0.5 degree range, which is right at the threshold, at least by the NOAA, from... Um, for, I mean, for the La Nina and for El Nino too, negative 0 0.5 is for La Nina, 0 0.5 is for El Nino, and in between that is considered Enzo neutral state, neither La Nina or El Nino, and notice how by the time we get to January of 2023, next month, or next year, because next, because, well, is it next month? Yeah, because this month is December. Uh, notice how we get to those anomalies too. Um, that threshold of neutral and away from La Nina and this could be the reason that we have all these warm anomalies building up in the Pacific and it's only a matter of time before they get to the surface and start eroding the La Nina away and um, really quickly to look at the SOI dashboard this is also in correlation with the La Nina as well but SOI dashboard has been tanking over the last few weeks and last month basically and we've been seeing it overall um moving down um from its positive state in the soi if you wonder what that is that's basically a pressure reading of the surface pressure between darwin which is in australia and tahiti um, which is right near south america of course along the equatorial pacific and why is this important that we measure the pressure patterns between those two areas? Well, because they affect the trade winds in the Pacific, which have basically a direct effect on how strong or weak any ENSO event is. So how strong, let's say, uh, the, the, anom the trade winds are for La Nina, or how weak the trade winds will be for an El Nino, because stronger trade winds upwell the waters and make them cooler. While the weaker the trade winds the more, the waters are able to warm up, which is how basically most of the waters, it's basically how um, this whole thing work when it comes to trade winds and water temperatures, which is what you'll hear us talk about um, pretty often. Notice how the SOI is tanking and it's going from very strong positive to um, very weakly positive to right around four degree, four points. Um, and it even shows two here. And usually, I believe the threshold that will be considered a solid La Nina uh, type of SOI pattern is usually around is usually around seven points of the SOI. And notice how we've been only at at below six. Now we're starting to get get closer to six. So maybe we'll see a little bit of a rebound with the La Nina. But given these anomalies here, we'll have to see if the La Nina does end up holding on for a little bit longer, or eventually these anomalies. Um, will end up making it up to the surface and uh, and erode the La Nina away. It's only a matter of time, and hey, it's been uh, it's been several years since we had a decent El Nino or a non La Nina, basically, or some sort of just warmer event of the Enzo in a while. So it's only a matter of time. And this uh, map here, if you're wondering what this is, is basically the uh, daily contribution to the SOI so basically this varies between um, between the days because um, 
because this is basically a 30-day average. So it averages out anything because if we would only have on the daily contributions, this would be all over the place. As you can see here, some days it goes to negative 31, which was November 7th, and then it went only a few days later to 4.5, and then after that, two days later, 22. Uh, points of the SOI. So you can tell this is all over the place. So it really wouldn't mean much if we just look at the daily contribution. And it would mean a lot more if we look at the average to see how the, the pressure pattern is faring over a long period of time as opposed to uh, just looking at the daily contribution. It would really not be as helpful. Uh, and then we look at the 90-day average, which is an average over the last three months. And if you take a look at the 90-day average, you can see here, basically remaining the same, kind of a, a situation of the La Nina leveling off, and eventually it will weaken, um, as is being shown here. And we'll see this eventually go down um, a little bit more, and eventually we'll see the La Nina die off. But it's all dependent on how and when, which will especially be a factor as to what as to the timing for the hurricane season which is what we'll be watching with the ENSO very closely um, in the next uh, few weeks and of course months leading up to next year's hurricane season meanwhile uh, looking at the storm prediction center to just see how the weather is across the United States no severe thunderstorms or organized severe thunderstorms are forecast for today if we look at the map you can basically see day two tomorrow, not much going on as well, just a few thunderstorms. And then day three, no thunderstorms forecast at all. And then if we take a look at the extended outlook from day four, day five, all the way up to day eight, you can see that uh, there isn't really much going on as well there too. Um, so that's good for now. But, uh, and I've been seeing a lot of talk on Twitter about, you know, uh, some sort of pattern change of like, um, the pattern switching in the Atlantic from the in the with with the North Atlantic oscillation, which is basically, you know, stuff to do with the high and low pressures out in the Atlantic Ocean, and a lot of people talking about how we might get a pattern that's a lot more favorable for snow along the East Coast or the snow in general um, for the eastern half of the United States, and that's pretty noticeable here. If you look at the risk of heavy snow, this is valid. Um, in a few weeks from now, from ten, from December 10th to December 16th, and obviously this is experimental because this is far out, and of course this isn't really official yet, so there isn't really nothing to set in, to be put set in stone, especially when it comes to snow weather for those um, along the East Coast know that very well, that when it comes to snow, it's not really something that you can say with certain um, far out, especially months in advance. Sometimes that could really get tricky, but even weeks out ahead of a snowstorm, it's really not that certain. So that's why we need to be cautious with this. But um, if we do look here, they are saying that there might be a slight risk of um, some heavy snow um, possible within this very large general region. But this is generally in the eastern half of the United States, as obvious. Um, and that is basically aligning with a lot of people saying that there might be a pattern change that allow for colder weather along the eastern United States and in turn, as well as a more favorable low track, um, low pressure track to allow for potentially some snow weather along the east coast. So um, east coast snow lovers that are waiting for their first snow of the winter season might have to watch in a few weeks because we might have a pattern that is more favorable or so for that type of event set up but we'll just obviously have to see because it's you know it's in the longer range so we can't really be certain right now on whether or not that'll be the case or not but you know we'll see and we'll obviously watch it here if anything interesting with that regard does pop up we'll obviously mention it but other than that not much to go around when it comes to hurricane season obviously it's in the off season and we'll continue to do these discussions every every saturday as i said um, but other than that, not nothing much going up going around today. Um, obviously, if you enjoyed um, the discussion today, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. You know, subscribe to the channel, especially if you want to see these discussions. As I said, every Saturday we'll be talking on what's going on with how things are faring up in the general world of the tropics. Um, we'll be talking about. Um, not only the Atlantic too, but also the Southern Hemisphere, since I know their season is coming up. And of course, from time to time, as I did promise, we'll talk a little bit 
about how the weather is faring across the United States. So we'll see how that all pans out. And I hope you are um, wanting to join us. So I really appreciate that. But of course, if you don't, that's fine too. But other than that, um, that closes up today's discussion for the Hurricane Hub. Stay safe, everybody. Stay warm and also stay happy, especially in the time that we're dealing with right now in the world. A lot of a lot of stuff going on, especially the time that we need positivity right now. So, of course, stay happy and stay well. And we'll talk again soon. Um, have a great rest of your weekend. And we'll talk again soon. And I'll see you.